I'm going to do our audience a service again of telling them what exactly we're going to cover in this segment so they can just hit 30 if they're not feeling it. And this one's probably a dicey proposition. We're going to continue the hockey conversation. I'm going to plug the merch store, and we're going to talk about motorsports with Jess briefly. All right, and maybe some other things, like Grimes being a terrible DJ. But I want to give the merch place a a, 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 a shout-out because they actually turned around these World Rar 3 shirts quickly. So hopefully you can have your World Rar 3 shirts. Colin, our, our group chat, has a good feeling about the Panthers this time out in time for this, seg- uh, for this series to end because Chris Cody thinks it's going to be a longer one. Roy... I want to pin you down on on this Golden Knights thing. They they had a really good deadline. They're getting Mark Stone back. They're really, really deep. That's an overwhelming team. Aiden Hill hasn't been the same guy. They have this two-headed mediocre monster between the pipes right now. But Dallas, they've got some fully formed players and some really exciting young players, but some young players that maybe could deal with some suffering. That is a reigning Stanley Cup champion. To just say that this one's going to be quick, you know more about Puck than I do, but I'm just expecting a bit of a grinder here. I mean, the Golden Knights are definitely a much different team from the beginning of the season when they won 11 straight, and obviously they had to deal with the Aiden Hill injury. I mean, that that pretty much sent them into a spiral. They barely got into the playoffs. And he hasn't recaptured that form. No. No. I mean, if he gets... He could probably steal a couple games. This could probably last until six. Mark, Mark Stone is such a galvanizing uh, yeah. presence on that team to have yeah. him back that's not that's not a little deal and hurdle has looked good it took him a little bit to get online over there and with stone coming back you imagine hurdle might i don't know what line he's going to end up playing in morse is kind of not taking the news that he's likely on the way out well <laughs> he's he's been a little bit lost but you got eichel you got morse show you got mark stone you got Hannah, like you got really good players over there All right, then do it what pick them I think to win the conference? No, no to win the, I, the series. So here's here's where I'm sitting. I, I'm in long game preseason on the uh, LA Kings to win the Stanley Cup, so I'm going to ride that one out. Oh, wow. Prince. Yeah, I'm in a long game, uh, long game there. I don't think that they're going to do it now as presently constituted. It's a really weird team. They spread the wealth on that team, but at their best, they drag games into the mud, and they're actually pretty deep. Like Lines three through four there are going to be good. If we're going off of recent, recent form and – I'm really excited for the Avalanche series because the Jets have owned the Avalanche. That's going to be a close series, man. It should be. They got the much better goalie. They got really difficult checking lines. You have I I think that the the class of McCarr and McKinnon, Miko Rantanen and company, that's going to end up being the difference. But that's a really good Winnipeg Jets team that's playing really good puck at that's this moment. That's my sneaky bet. I have a, a bet on a bet for them to win the conference because of their goalie. They I think the, they could have the the good goalie. Yeah, Hello Hello Bucks, yeah, he's the best goalie in the in the league right yeah. now. So that's going to be really difficult. It's it's a great NHL postseason. Really difficult matchups. I'd be worried if I'm a Vancouver Canucks uh, fan because they play the type of style that get plucked. And Andrew Burnett has kind of figured out how to play a playoff style. That would be your upset. Yeah, probably. Well, I don't. It's not even that big of an upset if you look at the odds. It, it, they're kind of the book is out on this Vancouver Canucks team that that's not how you win playing playoff hockey. You would think that you'd be able to turn to ESPN for guidance on what to watch. If I'm just a casual sports fan, I'm maybe pulling up ESPN.com/slash/NHL and I'm reading t- some of their articles, and they put together a list of the top 50 players in the NHL playoffs, and they lost me with number one. Number one is Austin Matthews, wonderful player. American player, great story. 69 goals this season. Fun to watch. No McDavid. It was actually brutal to watch them play the last two games and him get, like, double-digit shots on goal. Yo, I mean, they tried. They desperately tried to get him to play the last two games, man. I loved that, seeing him not get it. You you wanted him to get it? I was glad to see him not get it. And honestly. Against Florida, I was glad he didn't get it. The reactions from Sheldon Keefe, their, their, their head man all season long, he was weird about it. And the last two games, like, Austin Matthews, to me, I don't know if other outlets picked up on this, he looked visibly upset when other players on his team scored. (laughs) When they had a delayed penalty call and the extra attacker came on and he didn't get that goal and he had to realize that I'm not going to get two minutes to get this goal. He was goal hunting, and now that they're in the playoffs, they can play their game, but they're going up against a real daddy. It's been how many days since they beat Boston? It's been like – it's been a while. They they haven't won a series against Boston in ages – yeah, especially generation. that comeback a couple of years ago. Yeah, oh, hard against James Reimer. Reimer? So, yeah, that was bad. I think, and this is who I believe should win the Hart Trophy, Nathan McKinnon, 
to me, yeah. the best player in the league this year. I had the hot take last week that, for me, he surpassed McDavid. You can go McCarr, McDavid, number two. Then we can start talking about Austin Matthews a little bit. But they really lost me on this list when they pulled up number 38, and it was Aaron Ekblad. Ugh. Well, I mean, he's coming off of injury, though. I mean, that, that's probably why, why they had him so low. What I'm so angry low. about is – well, I'm so, so low. High, so high. Yeah, that is super high for Aaron Ekblad. Like, three years ago, cool. Yeah, I'll he's, meet you there. He's barely in the top 38 on the Panthers. <laughs> he's. <laughs> can you even count on Aaron Ekblad? Aaron Ekblad, at his best right now, is maybe the third best defenseman for the Florida, Florida Panthers. Which, which, which is why I'm so angry they didn't. They left off Gustav Forsling, who's... They didn't even give Forsling honorable mention. I'm going to pull a perk. They're not Is watching that? the game. Wow. That guy, not watching the game. No, wow. there's not. And there's wow. a lot of hockey stuff. I'm not going to allege AI, but I read a Bleacher Report preview back when everyone assumed that the Leafs were playing the Panthers that read like AI just because they picked the wrong goalie who as our, our top, top line goalie. They said Solars was our number one goalie. Did they just sort by goals against average? Well, he's he's been the best backup goalie in the league. We can, yep. we, we can say that. And if Bob shows – what he's shown in, in previous years. I do trust Bob a little bit more. But if he's at all shaky, and we've had some good backup goalies down here in Florida, dating back to Juan and Reimer over Luongo, and Alex Lyon helping carry the, the Panthers into the uh, the postseason last year to the point where he might have actually – you didn't know who goalie number one was. If Bob runs into it and he's getting now goalie by Vasilevsky, you got a pretty a pretty good backup hand in Solars, and he's been my favorite out of that. Right lot. now, I'm saying let's give Bob a leash because I think he's earned it. But yes. <laughs> if he has a bad I mean, game, I, I think my yeah. tone might change. Well, Bob, if Bob's, he gives up six, then yeah, sure. Bob's going to be a Vesna. Awesome. He's going to be a Vesna <laughs> finalist, right? He's not going to win it, but no, he's not going to win it. No, seems no, like we can develop goalies, huh? Like, is this like like a skill we have? Except is this for Spencer random? Knight, who's got admittedly other stuff going on. Yeah, it'll be back next season. This is a great sports weekend. So excited. Fantastic. You have the NBA playoffs, NHL playoffs. Way to stifle that burp. Thank you. Excuse it me. It might have been a throat thing. It was an <laughs> inner, fart. inner fart. I heard that YouTube TV is letting you do NHL playoff, NBA playoff multi views this weekend. Oh, really? That they, is they started it last week. Clutch. Yeah. Hugely we're, clutch. We're one step closer to choose your own, <laughs> which is, I don't think they've done that yet. But we also have a big motorsports weekend, Smetty. I know you're the Formula One voice. I, as you know, noted NASCAR gearhead, could not be more excited for Talladega. And with Pitbull in it, running Trackhouse, which has been a very successful racing team, well, everything this guy touches turns to gold. So mm-hmm. you're, not, you're not doing the bit? We, we are, well, Formula One, calling it Talladega. I want to call it Daladega oh. because if Pimple oh, wins it, yeah, we, yeah, make it we make it Daladega. I'll get into Talladega in a moment. But uh, Max Verstappen, how will he overcome this? Didn't qualify in the top three. Well, the, so the Chinese Grand Prix uh, sprint qualifying was this morning, and I I didn't get to watch it because it was on at 4 a.m. Yeah. So far, like this year, most of the races have been in the middle of the night. So actually, when Formula One comes to Miami, which is the next race after this next weekend, race. it will be – in our time zone, so I I'm, I feel like that will be the official beginning of the American formula. I'm low key excited for this for Chinese fans. one because I can actually watch this one because I'll be home at that time. I'll be like cracked out on something. Oh God! So well, <laughs> they haven't raced in China what? in in since the new regulation set. I, they haven't raced there in years because of COVID and everything and all the regulate shutdowns and everything. So there's not a lot of data on like what the the track is and there's also weather this weekend. Yeah. So. I don't know. I'm not too worried about Max Verstappen, but yeah, there was there was rain this morning. I think he'll pull through. Although he he recently did not win a race. I saw that. Yeah, he had a malfunction and DNF'd. He DNF'd, which is coming back soon. Yes, I have, actually have a call about it today. That's fantastic. like I said, official hard launch of Formula One season <laughs> is Miami. When DNF comes back yeah. and Miami, and so when the when the time zones normalize, <laughs> DNF us. is a bad thing. Did yeah, not finish. Right. But then why did you guys name the podcast DNF? Well, as you can see, Tony, sometimes... It should be DNS. Finish. Did not start. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> to, no DNC. fault of Ian Spencer. Didn't right? no, no, I, know, I know you guys are locked in. Uh, but we're trying to we're trying to spruce up the presentation Locking a little bit it. and all that stuff uh, takes time. But we I'm excited to see. Push, push, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited to see what you guys do for Formula One week down here in Miami. But Talladega, 
Now, for casual sports fans, they may know Talladega's reputation is the most dangerous track because it's a super speedway. It's one of two restrictor plate races. It's one giant oval. Yeah, a lot of left turns. But you have essentially what becomes like 200-mile-per-hour traffic jams, and it is famous for the big one. It's a very dangerous track. It's a very dangerous race. Betting on this one is you, you essentially take three drivers and you hope for the best. It is super dangerous, and people essentially tune in to see a lot of cars crash. It's going to be that dangerous. And at the center of it all is Pitbull, Mondo, guiding track house racing, a huge successful effort. And I'm wondering if Pitbull has been enough to draw, because I know that Billy has actually gone to a Daytona 500 yeah. before. Are you going to be, are you a track house racing guy? Uh, sure. Okay. When is the race? It's Sunday? Sunday at 3.30. But Wasn't there is- he supposed to perform at the Daytona 500 and then rain kept weather. pushing it back? The, the, the weather sucks. How it's- weird is it that <laughs> in Dubai sucks. they force it to rain? Not that that's related now to what we're talking about. Questions, Seedlings? Really. Have you guys read about these things? Yeah. No. Yeah, they create artificial rain yeah. because of the, the climate. Really? Yeah, they can essentially impregnate Have you clouds not seen the, and the force flooding them to over rain. There, well, that that that's a whole thing. I don't know if that's what caused that. Yeah, but was that the uh, but, yeah, but what that wasn't artificial rain that caused the flooding, was it? Yeah. It was? Yeah, they had a huge storm and that, that's that what the issue was. Look at that. It's confirmed though. No, yeah, that part I don't know that's confirmed, but it is confirmed that they do create artificial rain so if they create artificial rain and then it rains so much that it's uncontrollable can we not kind of put the pieces together that there was an uncontrollable rain that they created that flooded the entire city so you think it was an intentional an intentional amount of rain that they created but isn't us creating rain climate change <laughs> Technically, now you're yes. Right yeah. we'll you mentioned, stop the rain. You mentioned more, climate, a, more right? of an extreme weather. You mentioned a dirty, uh, dangerous track, and that would get me into racing. If like a, there was a track that had like a slippery section. Chris, there's several. Oh, you mean like mm. a Mario like, Kart? Like track. Yeah. intentionally Ooh, like dangerous. That. Like there's banana Rainbow peels, Rainbow banana Road. peels. <laughs> yeah. Total Cra- shells. Blue shells. Big craters in the middle of the yeah. road. Crazy yeah. amount of rain. Well, Global Talladega. Warming, Taylor Swift new album. Hmm. How are these things all connected, I wonder? What is the name of that Taylor Swift album? The Tortured Poets Department. Stupid. Sounds whack. I, if I'm Dead Poet Society, I'm suing. It was I'm the whole su- point. I'm suing. I mean, not to get sued, but it'll probably help their sales. The, what? The, the Dead Poet Society? It's a, That's not what you think it is. It's pal. a movie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure by now you have seen the image of Mark Zuckerberg that has made the rounds on social media. A glow up for Zuck. Looks really good. And it turned out to be a fake. (laughs) And it only faked out guys. Because Jess knew this was a fake from the moment she saw it. And I think I know what's going on here. But Jess, you weren't at all fooled. It looks so fake. Where would this facial hair have come from? This man has had no facial hair and does not look Ever. like he has the ability to grow facial hair. He doesn't need. Look, we just made I fake. Clouds. He doesn't need to grow I it. He's you're he, doing a hair transplant. Yeah. He beard can transplant make a be- he can make a beard. It looks very edited. I saw someone call him. He went from Mister Steal Your Data to Mister Steal Your Girl. I think what happened here with so many guys getting fooled because this was an altered image, is. Guys, and I say this as someone that's just recovering from a bad shave, guys put a lot of value on a beard. Oh, yeah. And we all saw that, and we're like, look, look at the difference a beard makes. That Look how much more handsome he is with a beard. But as you can see right now on the screen, the original image with the doctored, they did much more than the beard. But our feeble little man brains just saw a beard and automatically assumed that's why he looks so much more I handsome. have quite literally zero, what almost feels like a receding jawline when I don't have a beard. <laughs> I am a butt ugly lunatic yeah. when I don't have a wow. beard. And Jeremy. I consider myself to be a, a relatively yeah. handsome man. I'm not saying I, I don't uh, You're a good looking feel guy. good about myself. You're a good looking guy. But I need to beard. have the beard. If the I don't beard. have the beard, I, you would not want to look it's at me. It's a all. disaster without Come the beard. Come in Monday. I won't do yeah. it. No, I won't. I haven't been, I haven't been fully clean shaven, but for maybe one time since high school you grow a good beard thank you and it helps it transforms it changes you. my whole face i've seen i was i was unfortunately was clean shaven for a wedding and there was a lot of Aren't photos you? of this and i just look back in horror seeing my clean shaven face nah, I like, it's not I, terrible it's not terrible i like beard bets because chris wanted to make a bet earlier this year i feel like the next oh, bet should be right. a beard bet that's right beard I, bet well, i won't participate beard Why? bet that should have been what we bet the nick batum foul on 
Oh. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, Too late. Is there anything that you're willing to bet your beard on? God, it would take so much for me to be willing to I, shave. Like, Chris, to come on to this show in, like, without a beard. Because Chris I, Cody shaved his so beard for a Dollar Wolf. Shave Club <laughs> activation, and he oh, took it like a champ. Those are my favorite memes of Chris, though. <laughs> like, do we have that somewhere? Hey, Can Mike, we find that in a minute? Hey, Chris, come here. Let's make an X. <laughs> it's the first day of XFL. All right, Mike, sure. I'd haunt me for the rest Mike, of my sure. life. Mike, sure. Yeah, I hate that picture. Please don't put it up if we can find it. We have oh, to find it. Oh, it's so it. good. You know, uh, hey, by the way, come on out to uh, Magic City for the the Magic City Fronton and Battle Court. I think this is our final Friday game. We're not making the playoffs. Much like the Miami Heat, is my team on right now? <laughs> Much we're like playing? the Miami Heat, we're playoffs. at a crossroads. This Tony, this turncoat Tony over here is a Wall Warriors oh, guy. Wall Warriors now. guy. Yeah, he, he does one for change. Does allowed? one interview with Julian and over here, he's he got got wooed. He did two interviews with uh, Cyclone. I was like, dude. My guy. I he, do like Julian. Uh, Julian's a, a nice guy. They got a nice team. Manny Different too. ownership, Manny so we don't hate them uh, as legend. much. Manny. Yeah, yeah Maybe I'll be a Wall Warriors guy. <laughs> 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 we might be Wall Warriors guys, too. Yeah, no, the, we're huge inflection point for the, the uh. side this year. <laughs> there is clean-shaven Chris Cody. If you didn't have yeah. the beanie, if you oh, didn't have the beanie, it would have been hell. This is almost as good as the picture you posted on your Instagram last week of your sunburn, Chris. Oh, yeah. That was a <laughs> yeah. classic. Very peachy. Yeah, but also surprising. Yeah. You have some definition there. I don't now, show the been... belly button, though, No, if you notice in that picture. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's another bet that we got. Look, we've talked about this for a little bit, and I think you have the confidence now. I'm not finally... showing you my belly button. <laughs> if What kind of hockey bet can we make? Beard bet. Beard, beard bet. bet belly beard button bet. bet belly button bet it's not right. happening all right puck. we're, we're gonna puck. go in the lab puck. you said clouds earlier clouds 